the thing I look for a quarterback is his leadership, but number two is his accuracy. Woods gets the carry. He's into the secondary over the 40 and thrown down at the 35-yard line. A 20-yard pickup by Allen Woods. Make it 21. Boy, he exploded through that hole. That was an excellent job by the left side of the Artichoke offensive line, led by number 56 there, Ian McLilly. Yeah, and the former star at Cactus High School in in Glendale using that uh, quick burst in the huge hole. First and 10 Scottsdale at the Phoenix 34 yard line. Sokol out of the shotgun, again they run it to Woods, loses his footing but stumbles forward and makes something out of nothing as they're right in that tough part of the field and he picks up five yards. And Scottsdale's using both those big tight ends and they're in a true tight end formation in the last few plays and it's spreading the, the Phoenix defensive front and they're trying to cover eight gaps with seven defenders, and you can't do it. And Woods is very keen uh, at finding that open gap, and he cut through there for a nice five-yard gain. Second and five, Scottsdale just outside the 28 of Phoenix College. Sokol again looks to throw, steps up, fires over the middle, complete to Blake Jackson inside the 10, the five, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Touchdown number 16 of the season for Blake Jackson, number 41 for Cody Sokol. It was 7-10 remaining in the first half. It's 27-7 Scottsdale. And that's the dilemma that you have. If you don't double cover Jackson, he can tear you up. And uh, he's just a physical mismatch for just about any defensive back in the Western State Football League. And uh, Great throw, great catch, and, and another a, a great response by the Scottsdale offense after PC was able to get some momentum going there. It goes for 28 yards and Vizari to try the extra point. His kick is good and Scottsdale leading at 28 to seven. Cody Sokol now four touchdown passes. On the afternoon, we'll take a break in the action. First and 10, Scottsdale from their own 15 yard line. Blackwell goes in motion. They fake it and dump it off here to Hayes in the near side. Hayes slips one tackle, but not going to get away back there by the linebacker, Tom Woodward. Well, the Bears snuffed that one out. They really read that well. They were trying to, Scouts was trying to get them to go on the fly motion fake to the opposite side, and uh, the Bears didn't bite, and uh, they had three, three Bears ready to make the hit on that quick pass to the, to the tailback. And a replay on that. Nice play by Phoenix College. Loss of three, it's going to be second down and 13 for Scott's to back of their own 12. Sokol drops back to throw. Fires underneath, this is complete to Tevin Newell on the far side. He races up for a first down and more. Finally shoved out of bounds right around the 29-yard line, a 17-yard pickup for Newell. And that was a great job by Newell of coming back to the football. That's one of the things that's hard to coach young, young receivers to do. Uh, but he did a great job beating the defensive back to the ball and then was able to make a good run after the catch for the first down. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Seven to nothing Scottsdale on the Artichokes. First and ten from their own 30-yard line. Sokol from the shotgun steps up, fires into traffic. Complete to Brooks for a first down and more. He gets into that treacherous part of the field, but he is 6'5", 240 and picks up 13 yards up the middle to the 43-yard line. Well, he's another one of those big athletes that they play in the slot. Uh, they list him as a tight end, but uh, you'll hardly ever see the artichokes in a tight end, true tight end formation. And uh, he does a nice job of, of getting open in the middle there and, and getting a nice run after the catch. And he'll be the heir apparent next year if he stays around to Blake Jackson. And looking at the size and talent of Brooks, he's awfully good himself. First down and 10, artichokes from their own 43 yard line. Delay to Hayes inside, loses his footing, but stays on his feet and fights his way for a nice little gain. Harper hit initially at the 46, and amongst others, including Woodward, but a good job to maybe get a couple extra out of that by Hayes. Yeah, yardage after first contact is one of the things we really look for as coaches from our running backs, and that was a great job by Hayes of picking up another two to three yards after first initial contact. Brennan Hayes, been at the University of Memphis, Second down and six, Scott still from their own 46. Sokol again out of the shotgun, has pressure, hit as he throws. Down the middle, it's off the fingertips of Brooks around the 30-yard line, and Sokol took a big hit as he unloaded that ball. You know, right now, the Artichokes are employing both of those big tight ends 
in the slot positions. And both of them were, went down the seam, and that time Brooks broke to the middle, and he had a step on the defender, and if it wasn't for pressure from the, the Bear front, uh, that probably was going to be another big play for the Scottsdale Fighting Artichokes. So third down and seven for Scottsdale, just over their own 45-yard well, line, 46. They need to get to the Phoenix 47. And with that, Cody Sokol is in the worst spot on the field. The quarterback, he could lose his footing without getting hit. Sokol looks to throw, and look at people falling. They set up a middle screen to Hayes, but he lost the handle on the ball immediately. Good pressure coming from Harper, and you can just see how muddy that field and how slippery it's getting for everybody. And they don't. You know, and the pros, they've, they've got enough they can afford where they've got all those extra cleats, but at this level, they don't, do they? Well, they also have tarps and uh, other things like that, domes quite often, yeah. uh, like we have here in Phoenix, where you don't have to worry about these kind of things. But uh, That's kind of fun, though, for, for the viewer to watch <laughs> slipping around. <laughs> Lazari in the punt for Scottsdale on fourth down and six, back deep on the far side, Gilmore, and Jude on the near side. Well, that was a nice... Uh, defensive series for the Bears to get off the field there and a fair catch called for and taking it a hop as Gilmore over at the 29 yard line I think Vazari even had a little bit of trouble keeping his footing on that just a 25 yard punt Phoenix College will take over for their third possession From Riggs Stadium in Mesa, welcome to MCTV's presentation of junior college football as the Mesa Thunderbirds host the Gila Monsters of Eastern Arizona. Hi, everybody. I'm Eric Anderson, along with Hall of Fame coach Joe Kirsting. And, well, Joe, tonight the weather's supposed to cool off a little bit, but ideal here in the Valley of Sun. Temperatures in the high 60s. A couple of teams on the opposite end of the spectrum here as far as winds goes. Mesa 1-8 and eight overall, Eastern 20th in the nation, 7-3. and three. They've have had a couple of bites as far as bowls go, so Eastern really needs to win this game tonight. But if you were coaching Mesa, Denver Lattimore is the coach. How do you motivate a 1-8 and eight team so they just don't mail it in? Well, it's tough. Uh, they've been on a negative side of the scale like you say most of the season but uh, these guys are college athletes and they're competitors they came here to compete they came here to improve as, as athletes to get an opportunity to go on and play the next level so i'm sure they'll be ready to play and you've seen mesa quite a few times this year doing the radio for them a couple of big athletes on offense particularly maurice trotter number two a big wide receiver six foot two six foot three can really go up make the big plays and that's a concern for eastern well, Trotter is a big play player, and uh, if Eastern's going to play him tight in the secondary, look for a little play action on the part of Mesa and, and go deep with Trotter. But, you know, the key for Mesa to me is, is to try to remain balanced. Uh, a couple weeks ago against Scottsdale, they were able to run the ball pretty well and mix in the play action pass, and they scored quite a few points against a pretty good Scottsdale defense. And Eastern coming up from Thatcher, the thatcher Safford area down in the eastern part of the state, they do nothing but run the ball. They only threw three times last week against Pima. The offensive line average is 325 pounds and how does Mesa stop that run 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 well Eric they throw the ball they just throw it backwards <laughs> as part of the triple option uh, and that's the whole key to their game they want they want to make you defend all three aspects of the option the dive to the fullback the quarterback on the keep and the pitch to their speedy uh, tailbacks around the corner so Mesa's got to play very disciplined defense uh, take away all three aspects and really rally to the football to stop that running game well it's Mason Eastern coming up right after this is the kickoff <laughs> 